Hey guys, got myself a bit of a score today. Got this here OP-31C oscilloscope by Kiksui Electronics Corp in Japan. Um, I was just out shopping and thought, hey, there's a, a second hand store there, let's go and have a look and see what they got. The usual white goods and clothes and stuff, but I found this thing just sitting on a shelf, just randomly, not even close to where all the rest of the power tools were. So I, um, as soon as I laid eyes on it, I squealed like a little girl, ran over and, um, and grabbed it. Now apparently it does work. The, uh, the note on there said that they turned it on and they got a display. So I've got a little bit of a, an old style plug here. You can see it's a little bit how you're doing, but we'll plug it in, see if it turns on. See what happens. So we'll click it on. It starts glowing down the bottom here. Now it's a valve based uh, oscilloscope, really old piece of kit. So it will take a little while for the valves to warm up. And you can sort of see the trace coming up here. There we go. Look at that. We had something for a little bit there. But we got we're getting a trace. So um you can see the pots are a little bit crunchy. So we're going to um, open this thing up and we'll uh, have a look inside. I want to replace all the capacitors, I'll be cleaning all the pots and um, hopefully it comes to good operating condition. I also managed to find schematics online so uh, it's going to make fixing this thing a little bit easier if we need to delve that deep. Now with anything like this, before you work on it, make sure it's unplugged and especially with the valves and things with big capacitors, turn it off and leave it off for a little while. 10-15 minutes, not even, probably not even that long, a few minutes anyway. Let it discharge and just chill out for a bit. You don't want to be opening up something like this, poking your finger in and then ending up laying on the floor. So be careful and take it easy. Now to get this thing apart, we've got to uh, take the four screws out here, one, two, three and four, and then pull it forward and the whole chassis will slide out of the case forwards. So if we get this out, A real stainless steel screws. That's a nice touch. And then this should just slide straight out. Just like that. And there's our scope, that's the internals. You can see the valves, there's six of them here. There's one at the back here, and there's one right back here with an anode cap on the top. We've got a, looks like a choke here. That'll be for the power supply. This will be the power supply section. So we've got a capacitor, got a choke. That's possibly a rectifier, I would say. Looks like a, a rectifier with a top anode cap. And then underneath, We've got our big power transformer, a few more caps, and um, there's a PCB, the back of the PCB. Just a single-sided PCB being this old. Um, but yeah, it looks like a pretty simple beast, and it should be pretty easy to get this thing back to full operating condition again. All right, we'll zoom in. We'll have a close look at this circuit board here. All right, so here we are inside. Got it just propped up on my Art of Electronics, just so we can get the right angle to, to have a look. Now, you can see the main circuit board here. These yellow caps, these are all oil-filled or oil-soaked paper caps. Very common in old equipment like this. Um, this one is working now, but I'm not gonna trust these things. They, they always fail, and it's not a matter of if, but when they're gonna fail. So I'm gonna replace all of these yellow caps with polypropylene style caps, these yellow or orange dipped um, caps. These are a lot more stable, better technology, newer, and they're going to last a lot longer. So we'll um, replace all of those. And you also got back here, maybe you can see down in here, there's a row of electro caps. This can here is an electrolytic as well. 
Um, these dry out and fail, so we're going to replace all of those. I'll get some axial uh, caps and put them in. This one here, I'll see if I can get an equivalent that's the same size and shape. Um, if not, I might just dig the guts out and then put new capacity inside just so it looks the same and it's it, it fits in the same spot. Um, there's another one down here. These ones are red, this one's green. Not sure why, it might be a different series, but actually this is Nippon Chemicon. Nihon Chemicon Condenser Co. Let's get a close look at that. This is old school. Look at that thing. I'll adjust the light a bit. There we go. Look at that. Nippon Chemical. Tokyo, Japan. This thing's made in Tokyo. That's like old. Capacitor, 50 microfarad, 50 volts. Surge, 75 volts. The old caps had a lot of leeway in their voltage ratings. Nowadays, you can't go even 5 volts over. But the old ones, they could go, you could you could push them, push the limits a little bit and they wouldn't really care. But now, the toler manufacturing tolerances are so tight that, yeah, you get a 50 volt cap and go 5 volts over, you're going to have a bad time. So I'll re definitely replace these with maybe like 100 volts or 120, whatever the, uh, the standard voltage ranges are, you know, 50, 63, uh, maybe 120 or something, but even a 120 volt cap, 50 microfarad, is going to be a lot smaller than this thing. Um, that's huge for a 50 volt, 50 mic cap. All right, here's the underside. Well, you can see the back of the PCB here, single sided, of course, being such an old uh, piece of equipment. Little globe here, that's the uh, on light that shines through the, the little crystal kind of plastic diffuser here. Uh, we've got a capacitor here to replace, and one here, this one looks like a pretty chunky one. You can see there maybe oil paper cond condenser with the uh, f what's that a thousand volt DC TV a thousand volt DC WV four hundred volt DC what's the rating on that 0 0.2 microfarad so um yeah oil paper capacitor so we'll get rid of all of those like I said before um, main power transformer here that'll be giving us our six point three volts for our filaments and uh, the schematic actually says uh, 350 volts, 6.3 volts, that sort of thing. That's you know, the main the main power. And then all the uh, pots up here, which I'll be uh, cleaning those with uh, deoxit because they're a bit crunchy. If they don't come good, I'll just replace them. They're just standard, standard pots. All right, in the back here, we've got, looks like a bit of a power supply section. And the uh, this is the main connector for our CRT. Got a couple capacitors, one here and one here, and another one here, an oil imp paper cap. So it's an oil impregnated paper capacitor, 0 0.02 microfarad and uh, 1500 WV. Looks like there's a bit of green on the end here, so that's probably been leaking a bit, so we'll definitely be replacing those, those three. Um, this here looks like a, a buffer tube or a rectifier, probably a buffer tube for the, for the uh, CRT until the uh, Anode cap is very common on these sorts of tubes. That one is actually a 1x2a tube, if that means anything to anyone. Um, this here, this is a capacitor as well, but it's, it's an oil bath capacitor. It's be full of oil inside. I'm pretty sure these ones are pretty much okay to leave. Um, the oil in there is probably PCBs, polychlorinated biphenyl or something like that. Uh, liquid, liquid cancer. Um, you don't want to be opening these things up and getting that oil around the place. It's it's nasty, nasty stuff. They actually um, don't use it. It's like the same level as, as asbestos, sort of don't use that shit. So um, we won't be opening that, and it's probably okay just to leave it, seeing as it's not leaking and it's, you know, just don't touch it while it's okay. Um, and the choke here, this is just a, a big inductor. Uh, these things are fine to leave. They're not burning. Just don't touch them. So, yeah, that's pretty much the unit. Found something interesting here about this inductor, the uh, choke here. It's not actually connected at all. Why is it just cut off? This looks like it's been repaired in the past. This capacitor here is different from the rest. And this one's been changed as well. You see it doesn't match up with the uh, the one on the other side here. It should be like a mirror image sort of thing. Um, so this has been repaired in the past. And I don't know if that has been disconnected as part of that repair. This is the schematic here. But it's, I would expect the inductor to be somewhere in here. See, here we've got a uh, 
a four-way rectified tube, the 6X4. So we've got our ground here in the middle of the, yeah, you've got a centre tap winding here. Comes through, rectifies, and we've got our output voltage here, the DC. Then you've got two smoothing capacitors and a uh, resistor in the middle. So usually the choke will be put where that resistor is or before. Usually they put it after the first capacitor so they can use a much smaller choke. So I'd expect it to have been connected here, but it's not. Um, so I, the only thing I can think of is maybe this is a later revision or an earlier revision or in any case a different revision to what this schematic is. Maybe they they've removed that to uh, cut costs or maybe they added it later because of some power line instabilities. Um, but it's not on this schematic. So maybe when this was repaired, they had this schematic because this is from a Japan, the Japanese website, the only one that's on the website. So maybe they've gone, oh, there's no inductor in the schematic, so let's chop it out of the circuit. All right, so um, I've stripped the ends. I gave the wires a bit of a clean. So we'll do a resistance check first just to see if we're an open circuit or not. And there you go. Open circuit. Absolutely nothing there. So that's why this has been disconnected. Um, it must have gone open circuit somewhere in its life. And they rather than replace it, because these are a little bit expensive, uh, considering the price of the rest of the components, capacitors are cheap. Inductors can be, you know, it could be 10, 15, maybe $20 for that sort of thing, I'm not sure. So they just pulled it out of the circuit and hope for the best. So I've pulled the uh, main power filtering cap out of the uh, scope. It used to sit just here in the back. Um, it was a 10 plus 10 microfarad. It was a two section one. I've, you can see there I've gutted it. I was going to repack with two new um, capacitors. Stick it in there and crimp it back closed again. But then I found in my stock of parts this one, a Unicon. It's a uh, 22 plus 22 microfarad at 500 volts. This one's rated to 500 volts. As you can see there. Um, so that one's the same size. A little bit longer, but not even a problem. Same size as the top there. So that's going to slip straight in. And uh, sit right there like that. Beautiful. Now, it's a higher capacitance, 22 microfarad. Um, that's going to give me a bit better filtering. If you look here, I've used Power Supply Designer 2. Um, you can see the uh, the graph I'm showing on the screen now. That's uh, the, with a 10 plus 10 microfarad. At the top left hand corner there you can see the schematic and I've got the uh, 10 plus 10, the two capacitors there. And uh, the ripple is, you know, we've got a bit of ripple there. So it's, you know, for something that's used for instrumentation, we want to get that down as low as possible. So if I flick to the, uh, the new schematic, which has got the 22 plus the 22, you can see the ripple is a lot lower. So um, that's a good thing because the, uh, the less ripple we have on the, um, on the power supply means we're going to get more accurate measurements. So we're going to stick this one in, in place of this one. I'll keep this can. I might use it for a future project or something. Um, could come in handy to rebuild a um, another radio or something. So that'll go in the parts bin. And uh, this one is going to go straight into our scope. New capacitor is installed there. All good. Some new wiring just to tidy things up a bit. Some of the wires getting a bit short and a bit scraggly, so I put some new ones in. You can see there, sits there quite nicely. It's just the uh, it's the same size as the old one. The only difference is this is black, the other, other one was silver. So not a problem at all. I'll put the resistor, the power supply resistor in once I do the uh, capacitors. I've also replaced the mains lead because the old one was looking a bit ratty and it was only a two pin unpolarized plug. So it means you could swap the active and neutral around, which for general electrical safety isn't the greatest. It doesn't affect the operation really, but it you know, it's not so good for safety. So I put the earth three pin, that way the active is always the active, neutral is always a neutral, and we've got an earth coming in. That earth is connected just in here, just next to this line filter. I put this line filter in because I had a spare, and I thought, oh, it's not going to hurt to put it in. Filter any noise coming in and out of the machine. Might help the specs, might not. Um, any interference from coming down from the line might, yeah, might help it. It's got the uh, capacitors in there that you see, like the X-class capacitors built in, so and a common mode choke, so I can't, it can't hurt this, the system. But the earth, it's got a little lug on there which I've crimped and it's just screwed onto the side of this bolt. I've also replaced the uh, rubber grommet that was here where this, these wires are coming to the transformer or going to the transformer. That was missing, so it's no good having 
just some bare white, like bare edges of the metal cutting onto the wires. So I put that in there just for a bit of safety and to protect those wires. One uh, point of note with these uh, fuse holders, you can see there's one contact just where I'm wiggling my finger now, and one just here where I'm wiggling my finger. That's just a standard fuse holder where you unscrew it and stick the fuse in and screw the lid back on. You want to make sure that your line side, the active side, or the incoming side is on the back, not on the side. Because when you unscrew this, you can contact, you can, especially with the older designs, you can stick your finger on and touch the metal inside. So if that's live, there's a possibility you could touch it and get a shock. So make sure that the live line active side is on the end where it's nice and deep where you can't get your finger in. So that's the uh, all the mains done. We've got the nice new cord. It's all done, cable tied, nice and neat. Now it's time for the capacitors. And I got a Christmas present. Well, I paid for it. I bought myself a Christmas present from DigiKey. All the new capacitors. Nice. Polypropylene, you know, the metalized film capacitors. So they're going to last a long time. And some nice electrodes here. They are Nichicons, so another good brand. So I'll replace all these and I might go to a, uh, a time lapse. That way it's not going to be so boring. You don't have to sit around for three hours while I do it. So let's get to it. Here we are all done. Replace all the capacitors, you can see the bright yellow in there, all the poly caps, and the blue ones are the uh, electros. I went for Nichicon in the end, just they were easy to get with the uh, axial style caps and the good uh, voltage ratings and whatnot. Um, I also replaced all the, the valves. I didn't replace the uh, buffer rectifier tubes at the back, just the uh, preamp tubes here. Uh, they're all 12AU7s and 12AT7s. I replaced them with the uh, JJ Electronic valves. I just found them down in Kihabara for a decent price. Um, you probably recognize these numbers, uh, especially if you do anything with preamplifiers and guitar amps and stuff, because a very popular preamp tube is a 12AX7. These are 12AT and a 12AU7, 12AT7, 12AU7. Um, they're just different gains. So you've got the 12AX, 12AT, 12AU. You just choose which one depending on how much gain you want. Uh, these ones are actually ECC81 and ECC82. Exactly the same tube. It's just the European and American numbering is just different, but the actual tube itself is perfectly and 100% interchangeable. Um, there's also a, uh, what is it, a 6DT6 tube, which is used for the sink. Um, you, know, you have a sink uh, circuitry in there, so you you can lock onto the signal, and that's what this tube is uh, being used for. It's a Panasonic, or well, back in the day it was called a National. That's basically a Panasonic tube. I found two of them... Uh, New old stock still taped up in the box, so I grabbed them for six dollars for the two tubes and uh, swap that one out too. So new capacitors, new tubes, and does it work? It works quite well. Nice uh, sharp trace on the front there, no burning. I also did a few little modifications. So we got some ground points for the capacitors and whatnot, and um, they kind of just soldered it to the uh, to the plated metal. But the solder doesn't stick to this plating, the cadmium or zinc or whatever this is. So I could actually just pick that off with a screwdriver. It was not a very good connection at all. So what I did was I got some emery paper and uh, rubbed it right back to a bare steel, and then it soldered beautifully. It looked like they got a, just a screwdriver and just kind of scratched it you know, roughly and then soldered down, and it, it wasn't very good. But now they're a perfect uh, ground point there. In the back here as well, you can see the three there. I removed that... Uh, Inductor, as we discussed before, because that's uh, superfluous. Inside here, there's that resistor on the uh, power supply. I was talking about how it was wired up on the capacitor. Nice big chunky one. Yeah, good heat dissipation. And there's a bit of tag board there, so I um I just soldered that straight to there, and it's a nice position. I use these cable ties that have like a, a screw hole in them, so I could actually bolt the cable tie down, and it's nice and tight there. And it's come up quite well. Uh, Got the, uh, oh that's right, the pots on the front. I just used some uh, some of the old Deoxit D5 and the Deoxit fader. Cleaned it out with this. Put a little bit of this in afterwards. 
this fader stuff has got a lubricant in there, so it stops the uh, the wiper from grinding into the um, into the carbon trace. It just makes it nice and smooth, and uh, just helps them last longer with that lubricant. So that's pretty much all we had to do, and it's all done, and it does actually work quite well. So I'll uh, move the camera, show you a view from the front, and um, I'll show you it turning on. So I thought just before we put the case on, we'll have one last look inside, see the nice beautiful shiny tubes and the, the new caps, looking pretty good. So I'll stick that case on and see how it goes when we turn it on. Alright, so moment of truth, got it hooked up here to my function generator, we'll turn it on, see what happens. Let it warm up for a sec, here we go. Yeah, look at that, that's pretty good. A little bit loosey-goosey on the... Uh, on the sink settings, but that's just the way these old machines were. Yeah, beautiful fine trace there. The focus is looking pretty tight, and all the uh, the knobs work quite well. Look at that, no crunchiness, no funny business at all. Yep, I'm gonna give that a thumbs up. That's definitely a win. I'll be hanging on to this, put it on the shelf, and uh, if you like seeing this sort of uh, video tubes and valves and whatnot let me know and i'll do some more on this sort of theme all right guys until then take it easy we'll see you next time